Can I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on today uh, and pay my respects to their elders past and present? Can I acknowledge as well the Vice-Chancellors in the room? Now, you might remember if you've attended one of these events before, I had posed the question, what is the appropriate uh, collective noun for a group of Vice-Chancellors? Uh, Steve Chapman from ECU's uh, version of events is that I should refer to them as a wisdom uh, however, his original proposition was a pomposity uh, of vice-chancellors. Uh, so you pick which one you want. Uh, can I also uh, acknowledge CEDA for bringing this event together again, doing a sensational job. John Langelant, uh, who is the president and director, uh, Paul Rogers, of course. Uh, Directors General who are in the room, my parliamentary colleagues, uh, Simon Millman, Dave Honey, and I didn't see her, but I think, oh, Libby, and Libby met him um, as well. So uh, thank you um, again to CEDA for putting this um, event together. What I'm going to talk to you about um, is what the state government can and is doing to assist in the future proofing of higher education. Also touch a little bit on um, disruption and what that might mean. Um, so state government has certain levers that it can pull. Uh, and we made a range of election commitments around uh, those levers to diversify the economy uh, and included in that uh, was international education and there's a significant role to be played in higher education uh, in that space as well. Um, we really want to work together in partnership uh, with education providers and we've certainly worked hard on ensuring we've got a constructive uh, relationship with the higher ed sector. So as Minister for Education, I chair WAHEC, which is the WA Higher Education Council. It's made up of the state's five vice-chancellors and me as chair. Now, I'm advised that no other state uh, has a higher education uh, collaborative body such as this, uh, and so I'm pleased that we're leading the nation in that sense. Of course, the other uh, driver of, uh, particularly in respect to international education, is Study Perth. Uh, and you would be aware of the really major uh, effort that's been put into refocusing uh, and restructuring uh, Study Perth as well. And uh, there are good things to come uh, there. If I touch briefly on the question of disruption uh, in higher education. Now, it seems to me that it comes in a few different forms. Firstly, in respect of the student experience, um, if they are spending less time on campus and more time online, how do the bricks and mortar universities differentiate the student experience? In my day, so I'm 56 and proud of it, uh, in my day it was all about the tutes and the connections that you made face to face at university. Now, Dave Honey is nodding because he and I were at university around about the same time. Um, that's not the case. That's not the case anymore. There's uh, online communities. Uh, and students can choose when they access the lectures uh, and the other um, interactions uh, online. There are five WA universities. There are more than five universities operating in facilities or hubs in WA. To what extent is that a disruptor? Or does it just, uh, I guess, indicate a natural evolution of the education marketplace? Then there's the extent to which digitalised teaching of itself is a disruptor. Has the cost of higher education push, pushed students uh, more into those kind of open university, open online courses, which provide free internet-based learning opportunities? Now, there was a lot of hype. I'm not sure that the hype has lived up about those, but that's potentially a disruptor. Of course, as the home of research, universities are in fact creators of disruption themselves, uh, inventing and innovating in changes, for example, in the manufacturing processes and health interventions, as just two examples. The thing about universities, of course, is that just as they may be the homes of that research in how to reduce, for example, production costs by increasing automation, and that's a disruptor, they're also the centres of social research into how disruption affects the community. So universities, in fact, have all bases covered. 
This government, the McGowan government, is committed to diversifying the economy and creating jobs for West Australians. And to do that, the kind of partnerships that we've got with our uh, five West Australian universities and the key uh, education providers across the state is absolutely critical. So both the state government and the WA universities are committed to increasing higher education participation of people in rural and regional Western Australia. And I'm going to touch on some of the projects that are being done, uh, at work that's been done collaboratively uh, through WAHEC. So if we want to address that, we need to encourage aspiration in higher ed amongst students in regional schools, including Indigenous students and those from families who've not previously participated in higher education. But we also want to encourage people to reskill and retrain. And so encouraging mature age students to consider expanding their skill set through higher education is important as well. Through WAHEC, Murdoch University is leading work uh, between the universities and the state government, whereby each university will take responsibility for a designated regional area to implement mutually uh, and agreed um, initiatives to raise those aspirations for higher education. Complementing that work through WAHEC, University of Notre Dame is leading a project to enable um, access, support and delivery of higher education to regional students through existing regional campuses regardless of what their home university is. So enrol in a course at UWA, uh, live in Broome, access Notre Dame's facilities uh, to conduct your uh, UWA course. Perhaps uh, the best example of collaboration between the universities uh, is in health training and research. So the WA Health Translation Network brings together WA's major hospitals, medical research institutes and the five universities to support medical research and translate that research into improved healthcare. WAHEC has identified uh, further collaboration in health as a key priority and Curtin University uh, is the lead university in that project. I want to touch uh, on the issue of international students uh, in particular. So encouraging international students to choose WA as a destination for study is critical to uh, our plans to diversify the economy and increase jobs. We need to market Perth as a study destination. We need to send a message uh, to the world that we welcome international students and their friends and their families. We need to make sure they get the message that Perth is an attractive, supportive destination to live, study and work. Um, we've got excellent universities here. Um, we know from the gorgeous weather that uh, Paula referred to earlier that our lifestyle is second to none. So later this year, we will uh, announce the international education strategy that uh, we've been working on uh, for some time. You'd also be aware that um, earlier this month, we announced an additional graduate skilled migration list targeted at high achieving graduates. We listened to the industry and we tweaked the migration settings to send a clear signal that we are serious about our commitment to welcome more international students. That program will see the brightest and the best international students graduating from WA University, so PhDs, Masters, Honours and other higher degree graduates, granted priority consideration for skilled migration under the state nominated migration program. Those students are essential to us maintaining the competitiveness of our universities in creating knowledge and building capacity for science uh, and technological development. So we anticipate that this change will attract an increased number of high quality international students to WA and help us to grow our share of the international education market. The universities are major players in international education and it's also an important priority for WAHEC. So UWA has taken the lead in the WAHEC project uh, to promote Perth as an education destination. So working towards uh, that branding uh, and working collaboratively uh, with other universities and through Study Perth as well. So we're going to send the message that WA should be a university town. Perth should be a university town for, uh, of choice for international students. I also want to touch on innovation hubs. So I want to talk about some of the uh, commitments that we've made as a government uh, which have a research base so that we are pulling one of those levers in respect uh, to how we future-proof uh, higher education in Western Australia. 
So we had an election commitment of some $16 million for the new industries fund as part of our plan for jobs. That fund supports um, initiatives including innovation hubs and science industry fellowships that are designed to increase that collaboration across um, industry, academia and government. So the universities and the state government through WAHEC are monitoring the development of those hubs uh, and looking at opportunities that we can use uh, to work together. The first of those hubs was announced in November last year, located at Edith Cowan University's Joondalup campus and focused on cyber security. It's a, an area of existing strength for Western Australia and Edith Cowan University is a world leader in cyber security research. More recently, we announced a commitment to the establishment of a life sciences innovation hub. So partnering with MedTech Pharma Industry Growth Centre and UWA. That's a commitment that will see um, medical technology, biotechnologies and pharmaceuticals uh, in an innovation hub established to grow our life sciences sector and support local jobs. And earlier this month, um, the Premier McGowan announced plans for our third innovation hub, the WA Data Science Innovation Hub, to be led by Curtin University. So providing practical training and developing skills uh, for WA jobs in data science and to helping West Australia capitalise on the opportunities that that data science uh, presents to grow our um, technology. One of the areas where we really are putting a lot of focus in, and I think there are enormous opportunities for Western Australia, uh, is in the defence industry. So we've established the Office of Defence West to ensure that we're able to secure more defence work for local industries. There are a range of opportunities across the spectrum um, of higher education disciplines. <clears throat> it's not just about building submarines. Um, if you think about defence and what they need in terms of uh, human movement, human resources, uh, logistical support, health support, think about all of the things that the defence industry needs. We are in a very special position uh, enabled to, uh, to take advantage of that. And so we've appointed a Rear Admiral, Rear Admiral uh, Raiden Gates uh, as the West Australian Defence Advocate. Uh, he um, has been working with WA universities and he came to uh, our WAHEC meeting in July. Um, and other than you know, feeling the need that we needed to salute him, um, we actually did have a really useful conversation with him. Um, and he's certainly of the view that West Australian universities are making a really positive impression uh, with their collaboration. He described the Team WA approach of the universities as being unique in Australia uh, and that our universities um, are poised to make a significant contribution to Australia's defence industry. And as I said, I really do think the opportunities there are enormous. In the area of STEM uh, in particular, there are a range of initiatives uh, starting in primary schools, but certainly working their way uh, through uh, to higher education as a major focus for our government. So the STEM advisory panel, uh, which is made up of industry experts, researchers and educators, consulted widely uh, to develop a STEM strategy. And in May, uh, we announced the goals and the pillars of the first ever state STEM skills strategy, together with an initial $3.3 million commitment from government uh, to begin the delivery of that strategy um, over the next four years. That includes funding for professional development of more than 1,000 teachers uh, to teach in lower socioeconomic public schools over the next four years. All of the research shows, research done by universities of course, shows that students in those um, more challenged uh, economic areas um, don't get the same kind of um, exposure to and encouragement uh, to participate in the STEM uh, science. So lifting the professional development capacity of uh, over a thousand teachers uh, should make a significant difference there. That has the potential to transform the STEM culture uh, in, those, uh, in those schools where it will be affected uh, and that will impact some 25,000 uh, students in that initial spend. So trying to create that culture uh, of encouraging students to participate in STEM. In addition to that, putting in place new science industry PhD fellowships, offering 24 fellowships worth about $30,000 each uh, to PhD candidates to collaborate with an industry partner in high, a high growth area. So that's another program trying to encourage links 
uh, between researchers and industry to add value to the PhD experience and strengthen collaboration and research. The Future Health Fund Research and Innovation Fund, another important McGowan government initiative, is currently being developed. So delivering on our election commitments will continue uh, to generate opportunities for involvement by the universities. So just a couple of more. The election commitment around an Office of Crime, Stats and Research, the Centre of Excellence in Literacy and Explicit Instruction, and Renewable um, programs in renewable energy and battery technology programs are uh, needing more research as well. There are many opportunities for us to future-proof higher education uh, in Western Australia uh, and we're working hard to do that. Now I understand I'm what stands between you and eating your lunch, uh, so I'll wrap up my comments. I'm sorry that I can't stay with you uh, for the panel. I need to go and um, uh, speak with a parliamentary committee and they wait for no one. Um, so I can't stay with you, but I've no doubt the Vice-Chancellors will answer every single question that you put to them and solve every challenge uh, that you present to them. And I look forward uh, to hearing the results uh, of your deliberations this afternoon. Have a great afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity of being with you.